Hello YouTube and welcome back. This is part 9 in my series on utilizing Blender as a video editor. Today we're going to finally talk about rendering. Now, we've got to this point without ever making an AVI file or a MPEG-4 file. So you've probably figured out that you can just press this little button down here or go up to the render section of the menu system and select render animation. It's pretty simple. But the things that you do need to know is what is going to get rendered and how can I control if the render is going to go to the screen or it's going to happen in the background? So I guess where we should start is with these black lines that are in the sequencer. These black lines, this starting line and this ending line, represent the range that is going to actually be rendered to the AVI file that it will be output when we hit the render button. Now you can change that range by simply clicking on end down here and typing in a new range. You can see that the black bar was extended to a farther frame. Or you can actually just use your mouse and click your left mouse button and drag and that will actually increase it. You can also change it in the properties window up here the exact same way you can type it in you'll notice it jumped and you can also drag it the same way that you did down there very easy to do so I do want to actually set this to go right to the last frame so let's that's at frame 172 so I'll actually type in 172 and hit enter and that gives us the entire video that I want to output so we have a couple options up here for displaying or not displaying the render. Now if I use the default option of image editor, when I hit the render button, it will render it to this section. Let's try that out. Let's hit animation. And you can see the video is being rendered in the image editor section. We'll give that a second. There we go. That's finished. Now I'm going to switch that back by going down here in video sequencer. It's not very convenient to have that go down there and then I have to switch it back. I really don't like that. Another option would be to render it in a new window. So we'll select new window and animate. And it open up a brand new window. And it's doing the animation. And we'll let that finish. There we go. Close that down. Now every time that I hit this render or this animation button in the render section, it is actually animating and putting that into an AVI file in my output directory. So you can also do full screen. I will actually render that. Kind of similar to doing a new window, just expands it all the way out. You have to hit go to the previous window to get back here. Now here's what I would recommend that you use, which is keep UI. If you use this option, it doesn't actually render it to the screen at all, which means that you're not wasting uh, processor power rendering an image to the screen while you're trying to process it into an AVI file. I would recommend that you actually turn it to keep UI. So let's actually render that and let's keep our eyes open up to the top of the screen to see what happens. You can see right here, it's sequencing the render. It's not showing it on the screen. That would be the best option on lower powered systems. So I guess that pretty much sums up the rendering process. On to the next video.